Hi, I'm Sergeant First Class Michael Warren, Logan's father. I'm also considered a Shidoshi Warren or Master Warren, depending upon which of classes uh, I'm teaching in the area here. And this is our family school for Warren Ryu, uh, which is a combination of 24 martial arts. I'm black belted in seven and working on others. I've been at this for over 38 years. Martial arts for our family is a way of connecting ourselves to our, our past and our history. And Logan is learning that and learning that he has a bigger part to play in the world. And part of that is the responsibility of being a protector and a defender, or we use the word warrior. The warrior hates war. So inside of these walls here, we use this as a practice space, the dojo, to prepare us for the outside world. So I'm just going to go over two basic meditation positions that we mentioned during the IEP planning and explain the posture and how to get into it. So you can kind of glance and see if he's slacking or, or, or doing it incorrectly. Uh, after that, I will briefly uh, discuss three of our training principles and I will state them in the martial context and immediately show you the translation to the classroom context. And these mantras are simple sayings, uh, aren't of a religious nature or anything like the chants that you hear in the background. Uh, it's a way to remind him to center himself and hopefully get the best performance out of him that we can so he can meet his potential. So first I'll give you a formal greeting. Now this fist represents our fighting out, our secrets that we keep close to our heart, the protection for our family close to our heart. We keep it and hold it secret and we hold that back because we want to make sure that we protect and don't harm others. But when forced, we will share and show that with others. And so when we greet each other, it's like, let's share that from our heart. And one of my masters, Paul Mason, he uh, has a school called the West Virginia Fighting Cobra. So he does like a little cobra with his hands and his foot saying is increase the peace. So. the piece. So follow me on into the school. It's very humble. We're still building up the walls more. Uh, we still have to support the frames and stuff. So he is learning how to strike and to hit. So he learns how not to have to strike and hit. Once you're given the ability to do something, then you can choose not to. I prefer pacifism, but I believe personally the only true pacifist is somebody who can actually pass a fist and then pass on passing that fist. Anyone else who says that they don't fight because they're, they're pacifist is lying. They're harmless. So in order to be peaceful, one must be capable of, of war. So I am teaching everything to Logan in the context of protect himself and protecting others. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, the students here, all my lessons are free. I used to teach professionally. I work with Ultimate Fighting Champions. I work with people that have taken world titles. I've had several world titles myself. Um, but. On my personal altar, uh, this is the temple in Charlotte, North Carolina, where I was actually ordained as a, as a lay monk uh, a while back in 2009. So it's been a little while. So the first of the two postures I'm gonna go into is Zanzen. I'm gonna go into it twice so I can show you what it looks like, the key things that you should be doing, and then um, the second time so you can see how to get into and out of the posture. Okay, so to begin with, it's left foot that goes down right foot that goes down. Sit back, right palm up, left palm in. My thumbs touch. My chin tucks in, but my head stays straight, my shoulders relax. Now the thumbs down here, we say should, we say should never form a mountain or a valley. They should be flat. And that's what the keys, somebody watching the meditator, that they're staying in focus. It just relaxes. As you can imagine, you breathe in through the nose, and out through the mouth. You'll notice my eyes aren't looking at the camera right now because they are neither open nor closed. They're at a 45 degree. And the secret is the tip of my tongue is gonna to touch the roof of my mouth. And my good friend, Alan, who's the senpai of the class, the big brother, who will do a 360 and then I'll show you how we get to this position. Zazen is used for a high and emotional state. If Logan's really, really frustrated, it'll pull him there. And the way that we go into this, we'll show from the side. So left foot goes first, but it goes to the ball of the feet, not flat. Second one goes to the ball of the feet, not flat. Shift my weight twice. 
twice, and then toes go flat, toes touching, right hand, left hand, chin in, head straight, tip of the tongue right the mouth, shoulders open. And come out of it, right foot, left foot. Second one, just for general focus, if you feel like he needs that five minute focus, uh, for a meditation cycle, this affects the whole nervous system, the circulatory system, and, it, and that's from Zanzen, which is a Zen meditation. This one is a uh, Qigong, or a uh, Chinese method of, of meditation that involves the martial arts. They call it Qigong. Um, if, you're, if you're a normal, healthy person, you say, hey, which Qi, the Chinese person is going to reply, oh, that's simple, that's air. If you ask a sick Chinese person, like, which Qi, and they're like, oh, it's a vital essence of life. And both are true. I mean, oxygen is the most addictive substance on the planet. You take one hit, you're hooked, and the withdrawal will kill you. I mean, so oxygen is kind of important. So with this one, it's a little different. You notice I start, my toes and feet are together, and I'm going to bring the ball, or excuse me, my heel to the ball of my left foot. Not to the toe, not to the mid arch, to the ball. I'm going to plant my first uh, phalanges on my right side or the first big toe, the ball of the foot, and turn it so my toes are straight. This sets the exact width and posture that's required for torso width. And from here, my hands are gonna come up, thumbs are gonna just touch my chest, and then come out till almost straight, but still slightly bent. Fingers are gonna stay straight and open. You don't want them drooping, you don't want them together. Shoulders are rounded as if I, had, I could fit an apple underneath my armpits. Same thing with the chin. And the common mistake that Logan or anyone that will make is they'll think they're standing up straight. And as a uh, senpai walks around here, I'm gonna show you proper. You should almost feel like he's falling forward. This is straight. Most people think that this is straight, which cuts off the circulation of the waist. Five minutes of this, breathing in through his nose, into the belly, exhale flattening his belly while touching the tip of his tongue to the roof of his mouth. Five minutes of that, you're going to see a changed child. Now, the way that we come out of this is my index phalanges and my thumbs are going to make a triangle. Look up, I'm going to inhale. Open, exhale. I'm gonna go in reverse. And when I get up to the top here, I'm gonna come onto my toes, flatten my palms, shake my left hand, shake my right leg, shake my left leg, right leg, left leg, right leg, shake it loose, shake the body loose, and that pulls you back into the focus. Now, there's three concepts that I've been reinforcing with him, and I, he first learns them from the martial aspect, that way he doesn't think it's learning about school too, so I will state them. Uh, if you have questions about the martial side of it, of course I'm there to always answer them, but I'm going to give them to you the context classroom that he has not heard yet that you can share with him that I think will help make that bridge that gap. So the first one is he or she who manages the distance manages the damage. Now in the classroom sense, we're talking about an emotional state or from the overwhelmingness that too many projects are our project deadline might cause. If he or she manages the mental distance so they have a bigger picture of what's going on or manages the distance so they can get in and really get close and focus on the one aspect that they really have to batten down on, then they can manage their overall emotional damage or the state of anxiety, the sadness, the overwhelmingness, the anger, the frustration, and they can simply focus on what needs to be focused on by managing the distance so you manage the damage. He or she who manages the distance manages the damage. The second one is there's always position before submission. And that's a fighting concept, but in the classroom, that's you have to be in the right place or in the right position in order to accomplish the task or to finish what you're trying to do. So for the classroom's sake, that's do you have your pens and pencils? Do you have your Chromebook? Do you have your books? Are you seated properly? Are you in the proper position to submit the work correctly? And you have to have the position of your homework being completed before you can submit your scores for grading. So ask him, 
what do you have to have before submission? Position. And the mental aspect, we can go a little further and say that you must put your mind in a position to submit to the time required to complete your studies and homework, or the time required to pay attention, or the time required to listen when a friend needs to speak. And so what I'm going to do after this short clip here is I'm gonna edit in a little bit of a video, hopefully it's entertaining, to show some of the amazing things that he's capable of doing, as all children are capable of doing, when given that opportunity and they put themselves in that right frame of mind. You'll see him do some amazing medical stuff, and then you'll see what he had with only three and a half weeks of time with his father ever in total with martial arts training. So the few clips that you see are only a few days worth of lessons and only a few hours of that. He is capable of doing a lot more than what he's letting on, and I think we all know that, which is why we have these meetings. So I use these sayings to help bring him back to state of mind. And I also strictly enforce that you will have your say, you will be heard, but when the adult does the corrections, you will listen first. You will rebuttal, then you will listen to the response, and then it is what it is. So he learns to accept that we're here to help him, as I know we all do, and I try to reinforce to him and the mats here, we do one of two things. We either win or we learn, and that's still winning. So we never lose in the mats, we never lose in the schoolroom, we never lose in the classroom. We either win by getting the test right and getting that 100% the first time, or we learn. We learn, oh, I didn't memorize that well, or I didn't do that properly, but we learn, and we learn what it is. So with that, I'll go ahead and close out this short video. And uh, hopefully this helps a little bit, and I'm pretty positive that it'll make some changes, especially with his uh, behavioral performance and how he interacts with others. His state of mind after he does this for a good solid five minutes completely changes. As long as increase the peace. Right an elbow at me. Okay. Meet. Pass and catch your palm towards me. Pass pin elbow.
Twist your body, just move your arms. It's better. Keep the defense up. Good job. So we got to make sure we got the right person, right? Right patient, mm -hmm. the right medicine, mm -hmm. and the right spot, right? Mm -hmm. So now what are you doing? You're supposed to clean the area yeah. with um, a scarlet scarf, but then okay. you're supposed to clean. put it down. Then you're supposed to check the muscle if it's there. You we already did that. Okay. So you grab a hold of it, push this, pull, pinch the muscle, and then quickly stab it in and push. That's it. Good job. And then you put the band-aid on after. Yeah. We do this. Remember how we told you to grab further up? There you go. Real nice and tight. There we go. Tight. Mm -hmm. I took it. I studied two months. Tight. They lined up so much. Can I stand up Find your spot first and put your glove on. Last day in the Navy was my first day in the Army. I really walked across the So they like, didn't even make you just break it down? Yeah, they break it down. Now the funny thing is, 
Would you rather go? Because when you take this out, my blood can spray out. You went through the hard pressure for that yet. You don't have to help me. But it was cool because that's a fine one. No? Yeah, it's, right. it's good. The, the only difference is that this one goes like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You see the red mark? Yeah. yeah. That lets you know where you're going to be going because it follows it. I see that line just like that. Can you hand me that tubing over there real quick? So if you imagine this under the skin, this is like this. Mm -hmm. You understand? So that I, I made the red mark on top of this. Mm -hmm. I clean it up because you want to make sure it's really clean. And then you'll you'll clean it again right before you go. Yeah. Just squeeze both of those real tight. Pop it. Shake it. Okay. Scrub it. Okay, good job. That's cool. Marsh, that was The army didn't even go to the military. I just want to say, uh, yeah. Which felt like the camp, because I was like, uh, I think one of them, I think one of their drill sergeants. Respect. Look at it. Don't touch, yeah, don't touch anything past the green, okay? Get your grip. Slow down. Where you're at. Go ahead. Go ahead. Lower your angle. Hold it. Hold it easy. Look. Do you have a flash yet? No. Nope. Okay. So you're right by the vein. All right. Do you feel anything at the tip? Um. Increase your angle. Go back to where you were at. Now you're. This is what's called fishing. Push a little bit. Just a little bit. Dude, you had like the coolest song. Yeah. Push a little bit. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Good okay. job. Now hold this part extra still and just the green part, okay? Hold this still. Slide the green. That's Very it. good. All right, oh, you're there. Okay, now pull the needle out. I put the needle in the blue container. Okay. Good job. All right, now watch. Now you're going to have to hold the green part still. Down, you know, look at look at that. Stick the tube in. Okay, don't let the green part slide out. You want the clear part to roll, slide down. You see how it screws in? Which side do I screw in? So push this forward, so it covers up the green cap. Got on the orange, just like that. Cool that I did. Aim center mass. Center that orange. Wait for it. Center. When the paper drops. Very good. All right, let's try. Take a look at the chamber. So, put it on that safe. I'll place it down. I'll take it from there. Thank 
skull, tip, you where do we point the tip? Overhead cut. You're stretching yourself too far. Bring that back foot with you. And don't lean. Back, stay straight. Now put the feet and the swing together, just like you do with the boken. Try a horizontal cut. Mm -hmm. This, the weight's going to be different. There you yeah. Go, so you can review later. All right. Bring it towards me. This hand's going to be doing all the pushing. And that one. This hand is going to be pulling and steering. So my body works together. Nice and smooth, non-striking stick stays up. Continuous, continuous, don't look at me, look at your partner. He's the one that's gonna hit you. Keep the knees bent. Keep rolling, keep rolling. Hey, Logan Warren, this is Anthony Vincent. Your father told me to give you a message. Now, I hear that you're getting into martial arts, and I hear that you're getting really good at it. I hear that you're practicing a lot, and uh, you're taking an interest in this, and I want to encourage you to keep going. Keep practicing, keep studying, keep moving forward. Before you know it, you'll be a master of your craft. Now I'm going to sing the rest. Logan, keep practicing, keep studying, keep moving forward, I believe in you, take it one day at a time, and before you know it, there'll be nothing you can do, oh, keep moving forward, you got this.